Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. We're making requests to the Father and we believe whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, He will give it to us. So are you ready? Release your faith now as we do this in agreement. Say, Father, I demand from you today my daily bread and I receive all of it in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. You see, the world is going through a very, very difficult period in our nation, especially the rate of inflation is crazy. Praise God. But you know what? God has promised us it is his responsibility to take care of us. And this is not something like a makeshift arrangement. This is what the Father desired and made plans for before the world began. Remember, I was telling you yesterday, we're going to look into the scripture in a moment. I was telling you yesterday when Jesus refers to the Father in heaven, he is not talking about reacting to his situation today. He is talking about the one who created all things from the beginning. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So when Jesus said we should pray, our Father who is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. That's to tell you from the beginning, before you were created, before you were formed, God himself had made plans for your daily bread. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. We are still talking about the glory of Jesus. And yesterday we are looking at now, the purpose of Jesus saying to us in our text is from John chapter 17 and verse 22, the glory which you have given me, I have given them so that they will be one as we are one. So now we're talking about this yesterday. If, if we are going to be one with Jesus, then we need to know who is Jesus. So we read Matthew chapter 16 yesterday when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say? that I am. And Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ. Let's go there quickly because we, we are continuing from there. Matthew, brother Matthew. Now I love this because Matthew said it and he wasn't quoting anybody. Matthew was there when this happened. And, and so Peter spoke up and says, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus responded by saying this. He says, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. That means Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Hmm. This is big. You know, sometimes... Uh, based on the understanding the Holy Spirit has given to you, there are, there are statements you read and you're just like, okay. You see, now I always say um, Bible understanding comes with a lot of um, definitions. Okay. So if you don't, now that's life in general. If you don't understand definitions, you will not understand the depth of a statement. See. For example, Jesus said, I am. No, God said, I am that I am. Okay. Now you look at it and say, ah, God just called himself, I am that I am. You may not understand the depth of that until you now begin to define what I am means. That's when, when you hear the statement, I am that I am, you now go, wow. For God to introduce himself like this, this must be a serious matter why because why whereas others understand just here i am that i am like a phrase or a name you see the definitions of each of those words and, and then you look at it and like ah so it's the same thing here jesus said to peter my father 
in heaven revealed this to you. Now understanding, when he, why would Jesus use, he didn't just say, my father revealed this to you. If he had said, my father revealed this to you, we could have simply said, oh, it's the Holy Spirit that revealed this to him. Now, get what I'm saying. You know, sometimes when we begin to split these things, people get, um, oh, you're trying to confuse us. No. See, understanding the Godhead, I pray one day the, God, the Lord gives us um, permission to teach on the Godhead. Understanding the Godhead, as one and then their their individual roles it's something beautiful <laughs> it's, not, it's not, now it's not something somebody coined or to try to make you believe that it is when you know the truth jesus said it you will experience freedom so for jesus to now say it is my father in heaven that's revealed this to you there is no other way you would have known. You didn't coin this or you didn't hear this from anybody because this has not been revealed to anybody. Everyone thought Jesus was a man anointed with superpowers. That's why the Jews had a problem with him. The Jews didn't have a problem with his miracles. They were jealous of him doing miracles. So they tried to um, discredit uh, or make the people feel Wow, please, for example, anytime Jesus heals on the Sabbath day, they, they use that as a reason to, to persecute him. You see, why did he heal on the Sabbath day? Nobody's supposed to walk. And then they go after the people. You know. And, and, and most times, their real problem with Jesus was what he said about himself. So one time, Jesus spoke and said, I and my father are one. And the Bible said the Jews picked up stones to stone him. And Jesus asked them, says, Okay, I've done many good works. For which of these works? Now Jesus played a wisdom on them. I've done many good works. For which of those works do you stone me? He said, No, for a good work, we're not stoning you. Find this in John chapter 10. From, for a good work, we're not stoning you. I think from verse 30 or thereabout. But for you being a man, making yourself equal with God. Uh huh. Jesus, what did Jesus say? I and my father are one. Now, what was Jesus saying there? He was saying something deep. Now, that's when Jesus just, now, you see, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. He was speaking to the Jews that day. And truly, Jesus, I think Jesus wanted to offend them. Because sometimes, now, not offend them by telling a lie. You, you know the truth. You know, if I tell these people the truth, they will get crazy. And that's what Jesus decided to do that day. Look, let me, let me get these guys infuriated. Let me get them mad. <laughs> so he said, look, guys, I am my father. I won. Ah, you're mad. <laughs> you're crazy. How dare you say such a thing? So, when Peter now spoke and says, you are the Christ. Wow. How did Peter know? It meant the father who created Peter destined this knowledge for him. Now you read about Paul. Paul speaking in uh, Colossians, you know, he said, this mystery have been hidden for all ages. And now God have chosen me to reveal this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, now so Paul was saying that, look, this is the reason I was born. God decided that I'll be the one to reveal this mystery. And that mystery is Christ in you. Now, hold on. Peter looked, see, I call the parties brat now. Now we all know nobody called Paul. Nobody called him to be an apostle. Nobody, nobody walked on Paul to be saved. He had an encounter with Jesus, and Jesus himself spoke and said, I have chosen you to reveal myself to you. That's the voice he heard. Now he responded to that voice. He accepted the ministry. 
And then now you find Paul saying something so important. He said, there is a ministry that God has given to me. He has given me the ability to understand a mystery. And what is that mystery? He said, the mystery is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, let's go back to what Peter said. Peter said, you are the Christ. Now that day, Peter saw Jesus beyond a man. He wasn't looking at a man standing before them. He, Alamasu Bredishki, he said to Jesus, this is who you are. You are the Christ. So what that meant was this. Hmm. This physical person we are looking at will soon vanish away. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. How did Peter know that? The Father revealed it to him. And Jesus said, wow. He says, Peter, Simon Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this thing to you, but my Father in heaven. Then he said, he went on for that to say, now watch this, he says, and I say to thee, thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it why because the father himself will hold him see that now the father himself will hold him. that's why the gates of hell will not prevail against the church and i explained to you yesterday what jesus meant that he will build his church he was not talking about laying physical block but building one physical building called the church and laying it on on top of peter's body no sir he was simply and that, that's what happened when you when you read the the new testament on the day of pentecost when the holy ghost came and the people were confused who spoke up and gave the introduction of the church peter spoke up remember when jesus wanted to send the gospel to the gentiles who was the first person he sent peter and that's what jesus meant by I will build my church. That's what he meant. I'm going to use you to build my church. And that's the same thing he's doing today. How's the church being built? By, by men that God have chosen. He chooses, he chooses them and causes them to bring forth his truth. And as they share his truth, what happens? The church is being built. The church is being built. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now that revelation Peter gave, you are the Christ. That day, the oneness of God, the Father, and Jesus was known. Because the thing that made Jesus the Christ is that oneness. So when Jesus now said later that I and my Father are one he was not referring to him as jesus he was referring to him as the christ because you don't know the father until you know christ you don't know jesus until you know christ praise god but hey here's the big one beyond the father beyond jesus paul came forth with this deep mystery and what is that mystery? He said, it is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Now, I wonder why Paul used the statement, hope of glory. I wonder why he didn't say the manifestation of glory. Now, probably because a lot of people will not understand. But Christ in you truly is the manifestation of glory. Remember, I said the glory is the Holy Spirit. Christ is the Holy Spirit. Christ is in you now. And because Christ is in you, in the glory. Now, what made Jesus, Jesus, is now right in you. So, the very essence of Jesus is the very essence of your life. Hmm. 
People will call it blasphemous if we say of you today, you are the Christ. Ah, don't call me the Christ. Call me, maybe you should call me a Christ or call me the part of Christ. No, don't say I'm the Christ. Who are you? Who are you? You are the custodian of the glory that Jesus had. The glory that Jesus had is Christ. That was the glory of Jesus. And now he has given that glory to us. Anamaru to verete. See, you are still struggling to be like Jesus, right? Jesus, I am Bruno. He is not. He is not waiting for you to be like him. He has already given you the thing that made him him. If you understand that, we carry the essence that made Jesus Jesus. So, what does that mean to you? It's time, and that's what he's calling you into to live from Christ not to try to be like Christ we cannot try to be like Christ we just live in Christ hallelujah we live in Christ and soon the world will begin to see Christ on the earth when we talk about Antichrist, guess what we're thinking? We're thinking of somebody who's opposing Jesus. Ah, Holy Spirit, help us today. We talk about Antichrist as, as someone or people who are opposing Jesus. But hey, <laughs> where is Christ? We are Christ. So Antichrist is anything, anyone who opposes our progress. Antichrist is anti-glory. Praise <laughs> God. Not anti-glory. No. Anti-glory. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? No. I come and Pradushi Adaba. Christ is in you. And that means the glory is to be manifested. It's not to be hoped for. The glory is to be manifested. The same way Christ in Jesus manifested the glory. Jesus manifested the glory everywhere he went. Today you are here. Christ is in you. What are you going to do? Sit down and think, ah, oh, ah, ah, it's time to manifest the glory for all men to see. Can you believe this? Oh, I want to manifest the glory, but you know, nah, there is no but in it. Oh, if I wish I, if I can just, fast. you know, sometimes we tell people, oh, if you, if you want to, if you want to manifest the glory of God, you need to fast and pray. As much as that looks true, but here's the thing: the Christ has already been given to you. Christ has been given to you. So what you are dealing with is getting your mind to function in agreement with Christ that is in you so sometimes we even think of the holy ghost as someone that is outside us says so holy spirit please come holy spirit come come and visit me in the holy spirit come and fill me again the one that is christ is in you there is the one that that smears us with power you see, he's everywhere. 
But the one you should pay attention to the most is the one in you. Christ in you. My time is up. Praise God. Holy Sepradida Azegedeba. Remaining where you are is a choice. And you made that choice to neglect the truth of who you are and who he is. If we don't manifest who we are, then we deny who he is. Think about this. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.